funny thing is like I feel now more confident than I did when I was you know in my teens or early 20s even early 30s and now I thought for the first time I'm wearing a little bit of crop tops with like high-waisted jeans because I said like <laughs> yes it you know I just yeah I just you have to be them. fun you have yeah. to be proud of your PL like we are only granted 75 summer, 75 spring, 75 autumns, and and uh, some, um, you know, 75 of them. And so we have to make sure that we are providing ourselves with quality experiences mm-hmm. and that we are living to the best versions of ourselves that we have. You know, we can't go back and redo the stardust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Like it's, this is who we are. And so we just have to embrace it and feel proud in your PL. And if, uh, I, I really do like that fashion is kind of like, um, a vessel through confidence Mm -hmm. within you. You know, I like that, like fashion, you know, based on the colors and textiles that you wear it, it, the confidence is already there. It's about enhancing it. It's about Mm -hmm. you owning it because it's in there. You just got to make sure she's up and out all the time, you know. Hello, Canela from Canela Vintage. I'm so stoked to have you here. I know we met in person um, last year, so it's brilliant to have you on the screen. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been uh, such a delight to have known you since then. Um, following you on your Instagram is so inspirational. It definitely keeps me motivated to keep, you know, breaking the edge with like color and, you know, just layering. And so I really enjoyed our our experience meeting each other as well as our Instagram, you know, friendship that we were able to hold because, you know, we live in different parts of the world. <laughs> Exactly on different continents and I was like I I mean I can just say like I loved you from the moment when I stepped into your boutique because I was there for a conference with work I brought a colleague along and I thought um dude there there is a, a lovely kind of like vintage shop let's go in there and then we went in there and we spent two hours and we just like, I've got lots of different uh, items. I've got this amazing blouse here, which is just fantastic. I mean, this is like a piece of art with these kind of like ruffled details. And yeah, and she bought kind of like a really lovely set of St. John's kind of like pieces, which are just classical. Um, she wears them as work as well. So I see her all the time, which is which is great. And I, I think we both shared our love for vintage and how you can really make an outfit so much more special with vintage. So yeah, I we exchanged Instagram details and we've been in contact <laughs> ever since. So yeah, that's that's how it goes in a in a new modern world. But yeah, like introduce yourself, maybe share a Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Okay. So first of all, I want to share that that was really sweet of you to say that. It almost makes me feel like I created a space, uh, like kid in a candy store experience, but you're able to still have it, you know grown and you know at a vintage shop and I think some that's really sweet of you to say but yes I'm Canela owner of Canela Vintage in San Antonio Texas um I've been in business for about seven years uh predominantly working out of a studio and that's exactly where I met uh my lovely uh host here (laughs) um and so um and I quickly outgrew that. And now I'm at the storefront, which I'll give you a little tour a little bit later. Um, but um, I'm super stoked. Um, my passion for vintage came pretty much out of necessity. Uh, a lot of the inspiration that I get uh, from as far as like colors and, and textiles are things that I grew up with uh, helping my grandma uh, at the ranch, you know, like she hustled exotic birds. And so like part of my inspiration of like the colors is really bright and uh, standish, you know, all the birds stood out in their own with their own color. So that kind of like, I bring that in a lot at the shop. And so it's definitely really tropical in that kind of sense, even though like I grew up in the desert, <laughs> but also the earthy tones too. I like to bring in those earthy elements and with the leather and the textile of like the shoes and a, a scent like earthiness to the, to the fabrics. But yes, been in business for about seven years and like our mission is to be proud in your PL. So um, Canela Vintage is like an exclusive vintage shop that gives old threads new vida. We are proud in your PL while keeping sustainability in mind. And um, and we do that by, you know, hosting, a, I would like to say, a beautiful archive of uh, 
fashion that I hope people can enjoy and try to think of wearing a second time. Um, my philosophy is that I hope my customers understand that like a Christmas red can be a Valentine's red as well as a 4th of July red or a summer watermelon red, you know, so depending on where you live. And so that kind of philosophy is just really at the forefront of the, the mission and our, our vision here at Canela Vintage, which is why we also collaborate with uh, organizations like Dress for Success San Antonio, which is an NGO here uh, local to the community. And I truly feel my heart, if you cannot, um, if you cannot um, have your basic survival needs met, like mom and dad, they're not gonna want to explore, or try out mom and pop shops. And they're gonna, you know, it's gonna be rough for them to enjoy fashion, foods and like, arts because basic survival are not being met. So I think it's important to make sure that, you know, as leaders in our community, that we are conscious of that and that we create spaces for other artists and uh, people that want to own businesses to, 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 to thrive, but also be a part of nonprofits that help heal community. Because ultimately as a business owner, like it affects me, you know, it affects me if there's a lot of homelessness in the area. If, you know, people are not getting their needs met, my shop will start getting break, broken into. So definitely nonprofit is something that I'm very, I vouch for a lot. Um, I try to support, I try to help, you know, right. Uh, uh, what is it, program, uh, client uh, programs, you know, I, I really feel like I, I, I know how to detail the, what the need. And so I just, right now I'm working as an ambassador though, because I had to step away because I'm a CEO <laughs> of Canela Vintage, so my heart's in two, but I'm hoping by like the, the fourth quarter of this year or the first quarter of next year that I'm able to have somebody here so I can give more of my time to community because I feel like it's important to, to definitely uh, make sure that, you know, um, you're contributing uh, to a healing community so we can keep enjoying things like fashion and think about sustainability. So absolutely. Um, it, please feel free to chime in <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I mean we, we chatted about your NGO efforts also when I was in the shop because I think this is amazing that you also you know like work in your local environment and help heal that because as you said I think if you don't do that then then things can go like in all kinds of crazy directions and and also like we all received a handout of some form or other, at, at least most people. I mean, absolutely. I, I think, absolutely. Yeah. And I think I, I can go into detail on how um, I kind of help them a little bit more with that. So um, um, a lot of my true vintage items are consignment pieces for them. So every quarter, I pretty much give them a check for, you know, anything that is sold. But um, my passion went a little bit further than that. Like I really wanted to get my hands on. So I actually went back to school, graduated with managing nonprofit organizations. So I was able to come back so much more powerful and really, really dissect what we do and how we can make things better and how how much of the reach are we responsible for not only here in San Antonio but like all of South Texas and hopefully Texas as a whole you know because I feel like um just for success is essential because it help, they help with sustainability empowering women through work efforts and building uh one-on-one -on -one resume skills especially the most powerful thing is dressing up the day of with the actual, you know, everything that is needed anywhere from the hair, um, you know, we get stipends for hair as well as like the, the clothes, the shoes, you know, purse, we think of every single detail that can help them have their mind there at their interview. And not only that, but after, you know, finding, um, pretty much uh, resources to help them be more competitive in the workplace. Because once you get the job, it's mm -hmm. it's one hurdle, but actually sustaining it and being a competitive uh, key uh, valued employee of your organization is what makes you valuable and makes you, you know, you know, um, more, uh, I guess, uh, gives you more power in, in, in generating agency within your workforce. And I think that's, that's key, you know, because, you know, if you don't ask, 
if everybody's asking for raises or people are doing, you know, are, are taking extra little classes online that are free and helping their already profession, just because you, just because you graduate doesn't mean that like, you can't keep learning. You have to keep learning, especially with modern day world. Like, and that's, what's keeping, that's what's, that's where just for success is trying to help the gap because a lot of people are not uh, really computer savvy and they're, you know, most of the time you're having like um, a lot of individuals who, you know, are, you know, stay at home moms. And now they're looking to do something different and technology has bypassed them. And now we're on iPhones and, you know, and so those are the kind of folks that just for success uh, focuses on. So yeah, but definitely um, cannot uh, enjoy fashion if we are, are the community's needs are not being met. Cause as, like I said, as a business owner, it affects me directly and, uh, and, if, and it affects ultimately my end goals. So if, if you think, you know, as an individual, you have your goals and you think, how does external factors affect my goal? And so if you're not aware of that, you know, it's going to be really hard for you to navigate through the world because you understand that ultimately we all have to help each other out. Everybody needs to eat. Absolutely. <laughs> and I really com commend your, you know, your work on this because I think it's so empower empowering like I think we have like a common theme here is obviously taking your space is also for, I mean, it's mainly women, but it's really kind of like being in there, don't shy away. And I think dressing and styling, not only for the interview, but also continuously to feel comfortable, to feel empowered, to, you know, raise your voice and articulate Absolutely. what you want, um, because only that you get closer to, to actually getting it. Um, and as we as we grow older and we become different main characters in our life, mm -hmm. our needs change and it's OK to ask for help. And so sometimes and there's plenty of resource centers that offer abundance of help. And it doesn't matter what, you know, pay bracket you're at. You know, everybody at some point needs someone to ask something to, you know. And so I think it's essential that we all help each other out at the end. Absolutely. Name of passion. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Women like sisters, we are helping each other. Absolutely. I wanted to go back to your shop because what I absolutely. what I really loved about it, and especially I think I want to also raise the awareness of like secondhand, which I always think it's like it's still new because it's just new, it's new to me. But mm -hmm. I think because your shop is more like a boutique and it's really nice. A lot of people in the UK, we have charity shops. I know in the US, you call them thrift shops, but sometimes a, like in the US, especially they are like overwhelmingly big. You don't know where to start. And mm -hmm. in charity shops in the UK, sometimes can also be a bit like, you know, there's too much. Sometimes the smell is a bit funny and people are put off by that. Versus your, your store is completely different. <laughs> You go in and you think like, and you have it like nicely curated, as you said, like you always have like a theme, there's different sections. And that's why we spend like two hours in there. <laughs> it was just, it was just fantastic. I mean, you think you should open a bar as well next to it. Like, you just know, they keep telling me to do that. We're in downtown San Antonio now. So, you know, that's not far fetched. And honestly, I'm, I'm contemplating that because, you know, girls got to have different sources of income. Like just because you sing doesn't mean you should only sing. A lot of artists are getting into creating their own brands or create mm -hmm. and getting into other avenues of creating a, a resource and funds for them, which is what everybody should be doing. And so I think sustainability which I love when you say charity shops because that was the first time I had heard that term to be completely honest and so I was like whoa charity shops and I always say charity shops I'm like oh no the thrift home oh, you mean charity shops like <laughs> <laughs> I think it was adorable and I think that's where we even though we were from like you know separate parts of the world we found commonalities mm -hmm. and we really really uh connected and I think that was really cool because it was definitely the philanthropy the fashion mm -hmm. and then just like the, the the love for sustainability absolutely and I really I cross my fingers it depends on whether we have okay. a, a specific data mm -hmm. presentation but if I can make it to that conference again that is always in December I'll let you know as soon as I book flights and I'll come and yes, bring please, my please colleagues do. Well. I, can, I will be off and we'll be hanging out <laughs> absolutely absolutely and we have like we have a mutual love for vintage escada 
And oh. I know you have like whatever escada piece you have, bring it in the shop because I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And and mm. and you asked me to bring some of my favorites right now. And there, of course, there's escada in there, of course. Ooh, <laughs> of course. I can't wait. Let's let's get over there. Maybe we start you describing your own style. How would you how would Absolutely. you Absolutely? Okay, so I would describe my style like um, like for everybody to understand, I would say in between like sporty spice, bosh, well, maybe all the spice girls at some point, <laughs> uh, it just depends like, like probably in the very beginning of when I started like getting into fashion was where I had my first job at Hot Topic. So I was like super rocked out. I had my septum peers. I had magenta hair. I was emo. Like you couldn't talk to me. I was listening to Chiodos and like, you know, um, uh, what are these bands? Like commercial rock for sure. Like Static X, mm -hmm. Kitty, like it was hot topic, you know? And then after I started going into college is when I started wanting to be a little bit more earthy, a little bit more booksy, a little bit more like olive and like, you know, more like my library theme. <laughs> That's cool. And so I kind of like, you know, dropped the rocker style, dropped the leather and I kind of got into more earthy tones uh, just to be a little bit more posh with like my new environment. So I guess mainly it changes as, as you know, I transcend through life. Um, but it was probably um, after I had kids, I feel like I really figured it out. Cause I feel like before that, I really didn't know, like I would just like wear clothes, honestly, like from charity shops, thrift shops because of necessity. Um, but once I got established and I had children and I really started thinking about like wanting to be fun with it, um, definitely athletic, but posh, I would say mm -hmm. modern, but definitely vintage. Um, so let me explain that to you. Oh, <laughs> so I love sometimes it. I'll have it. like, um, like track track pants you know like track mm -hmm. pants adidas with the white stripes on the side i'll put them on with like dressy boots i'll put on a little tank and then i'll put on like clip on earrings so it's like dressed up but sporty but not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and so um i think sometimes i add a, a, a very like festival um edge to it too sometimes you know depending like my hair and stuff um i do like to play with a lot of um uh like eyeshadow colors matching something mm -hmm. in my clothes you know just kind of extent the fashion um but definitely uh like sporty posh <laughs> in between there yeah I definitely like to be comfortable but I like to look uh also elegant mm -hmm. um and I, I would say I definitely have like a a sexy side to my to my uh like style right now but I would say it's definitely not exposed like I definitely keep it you know uh, respectful, but I do like to, it's hot in Texas. So you gotta, yeah, <laughs> it changes. Um, but yeah, that's, kind of, and of course, like, I feel like fabrics, like St. John, like, for example, the one like I'm wearing right now, it's just so versatile. Like I could wear this in wintertime underneath a, a turtleneck and I can wear it like this right now for summer. And so it's just, um, yeah, especially with the shop right now, I love playing. Like, I feel like, um, in the mornings I'm like, clueless I'm like oh my gosh what am I wearing today and it's so hard not to keep stuff because I'm like no the girls the girls need it I need to put it at the shop <laughs> and just of recently uh I started kind of dabbling into making my own clothes it's in between mm. Edward scissored hands and your nana like oh. amateur level <laughs> and I actually sold some things which was really cool and so um I just got items that were at the shop again sustainable sustainable um got items at the shop that have been here uh, expired I feel like a, a little bit mm -hmm. and so I kind of just said okay how else can I present these to the customers so I like uh went to the thrift shop I found like supplies and I just created things and some really cool stuff came out of it and the customers were really excited for that so do you have something you can go into to show absolutely me? oh uh, do you want me to show something yeah, of course. Of yeah, course. absolutely. Okay, I'll show you two things that I'm working on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Ooh, one. I loved it. Oh so my god, I loved it. This one right here is actually a um at an estate sale. I found uh these kitchen curtains. So we washed them, we ironed them, and then I figured out how the length. And so I literally two shirts came of it and two scrunchies. <gasps> 
And that's all I made out of it. And so it was this one here. And the other one was really cool. It was more like pinup style. That mm -hmm. one sold quick. But this is one of them that I made. And then this one had some stains that I couldn't take out. So I did some embroidery work on it. Nice. <laughs> and so anywhere that there was, um, like right here, you could see there's a, like some where I'm going to oh, yes. go in where I'm going to go in. So that was a stain and I went in to do the little heart and then I'm going to finish embroidering it. So I have, I embroidered oh, that. And so I don't know if I'm going to leave it like that or if I'm going to cut it and then put like, like pink fluff on it just to make it fun mm -hmm. and on the edges. So that's where I incorporate like the sporty, but also the posh yes. element to it. So it'd be something like this, but yeah, definitely. I, I love them. I love them. <laughs> I mean, First, the first one, just the colors and the print on this is fantastic because that would be a, a top that I immediately would gravitate towards. And the funny thing is like, I feel now more confident than I did when I was, you know, in my teens or early twenties, even early thirties. And now I thought for the first time I'm wearing a little bit of crop tops with like high waisted jeans because I said like, <laughs> get it. You know, I just, yeah, I just you have to be them. fun. You have yeah. to be proud of your PL. Like we're only granted 75 summer, 75 spring, 75 autumns and, and uh, some, um, you know, 75 of them. And so we have to make sure that we are providing ourselves with quality experiences mm -hmm. and that we are living to the best versions of ourselves that we have, you know, we can't go back and redo the stardust. Yes. <laughs> you know? Like it's, this is who we are. And so we just have to embrace it and feel proud in your PL. And if, uh, I, I really do like that fashion is kind of like, um, a vessel through confidence mm -hmm. within you. You know, I like that, like fashion, you know, based on the colors and textiles that you wear it, it the confidence is already there. It's about enhancing it. It's about mm -hmm. you owning it because it's in there. You just got to make sure she's up and out all the time, you know? <laughs> and so I feel that with, with clothes, it's kind of like, um, it's like a, a very fluid way to like bring her out, you know, and to yes. kind of like, okay, you know, she's here, you know, and, and I think exactly. clothes gives you that, gives you that, you know, energy to, to bring her out. Cause I think we all become confident at different stages in our life. Like we conquer different confidence in like socially, you know, school or, you know, grades or swimming, you know, whatever. But I think in, when it comes to confidence and fashion, I think it, that's where it really enhances who you really are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's beautiful. Cause then it like shows your vibe. It shows your essence, like, you know, what you're about, like you could tell. And if somebody's taking care of themselves, I feel like people are going to be like, they come at you with respect. They come at you co correct. You know, they're not trying to take you, you know, for anything and because you can handle yourself. And I think that's really important, especially for women, yes. um, to make sure that they stand in, in with respect, no matter what age you are, even if you're a child, you, you demand respect, you know, and you demand privacy. <laughs> and so, um, I think it's important. Um, and I love how, how, confidence you know helps fashion in that manner and bring it out so absolutely I couldn't see it any better it's 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 so true and I think the more you feel comfortable in what you wear the more it exudes and it tells your story and I think no matter I'm I'm not a big believer in like oh wear these trends or wear this to make you taller slimmer you know or wear this in this age bracket because I think you just have to find which items of clothing tell your story and that's totally personal individual and you sometimes have to experiment to really find where you are of that but I think once you find it then it's it's just such an important powerful thing um because as you turn said, it off <laughs> yeah absolutely like you talk to it like non-verbally like we we judge each other within one second mm -hmm. if we want it or not so like I think make the most out of that conversation that non-verbal conversation you have with somebody and tell your story in your right way and as you said especially women we are oftentimes you know told to be small or you know fashion industry you have to be like super slim small don't say very much and like I think fashion can be completely the opposite and that's why the name as well like you take your space you're just out there so yeah it's it's lovely you you you're speaking to that because I'm I'm an absolute fan of and that 
I, I thank you for that. And I like how you said um, that, you know, fashion is kind of boxed in. That's precisely why I made Canela Vintage. I felt that once I was transitioning into these different characters in my life that, you know, Forever 21 wasn't going to cut it anymore, you know, <laughs> you know, like it had to start being something different, you know, and I thought, well, what is that different? Because obviously I don't resonate with like, you know, brands like, you know, Balenciaga and like, even though I do house them in my shop, but like, I don't resonate, I, I like, I don't see myself like modeling, like, you know, mm-hmm. I want people to feel like they could be my model, like mm-hmm. every, you know, every this brand is for everyone, you know? And so um, that's part of the reason why I chose like the shop to kind of make it gender neutral. Like, I'm like, Hey, you pick your style, you pick your size, you pick what you like, you know, everything's here, you know, you know, organized in a certain way um, so that we can kind of break those Mm -hmm. barriers and we can start creating like a new form of thinking about fashion that's inclusive to all sizes and it's ethically source and sustainability is at the forefront of it, you know, because as much as I would like to, you know, I have a bunch of brands, you know, oh, let's, you know, let's mass produce, you know, products and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I can't get into that. I'm sorry. Like, I know people want me to drop like my own merch and stuff, but if my ideal situation would be, you know, finding sustainable canvases, like, these like and then putting my brand on top of them because I feel like I couldn't just go and make my own brand like that mm-hmm. unless somebody's making them out of like sustainable means but at the same time I'm like I don't want to house like a lot of product like that because that's not sustainable either that's why you know organizations like Walmart you know have operational costs that are like insane because they ha- they're just housing all this product and so yeah, I definitely didn't want to be doing that. So that's why you'll find very small quantities of things or just one of one because of, of those things as well. Because I feel like, you know, I'm, I don't want everybody to feel the same, but I want everybody to feel included. <laughs> yeah. And, and I love that because I think, so I have, I have some secondhand fast fashion because that's what oftentimes it's ability in charity shops. But whenever I get a vintage fine, it's so much more because the design is unique. I know there's not somebody else running around with that. The quality is oftentimes better. And, and there was something, as I said, like nobody's making this. Like you can't get this on Zara. No, no chance. And, and as you said, it's all about the sustainability, not the mass produce where people then have leftovers, which they just dump anywhere. I know a lot of it goes shipped to Africa. And, you know, it destroys the whole clothing industry there, the local one. There was much more sustainability and becomes an environmental hazard. Um, so, oh, God, I could I could get on about this. But oh, I think- absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But I think I think that's where we found commonalities, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why we appreciate what we do mm-hmm. uh, and 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 that we, you know, that we have this common share of like, you know, yes. make sure that, you know, we can, it can be so, so fun, but it can also be sustainable and, you know, better for everyone in the earth <laughs> exactly and that's that's what we you like I, I know I distracted you earlier but you wanted to show me like your pieces um, oh yeah you as well because I would I'll like start to off with the uh, I'll start off with a this is a reworked item um yeah. jewelry uh, these are St. John buttons that we I reworked into uh earrings I love and them so, yeah that is super I mean like I, I love, so I'm not a clip-on, I'm the kind of like hanging them at an off. I have like maybe one or two clip-ons, but I love, I love jewelry like that because it has such a statement, such a strong vibe. And I think that's really, really clever. You know, and, and uh, most of the time people will not put up with clip-ons. I get mm-hmm. it. Trust me. I get it. I'm just a fan. <laughs> I'm just a fan. In fashion, mm-hmm. you do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. But I understand because a lot of modern, um, you you know, girls are not really into the clip-ons and that's absolutely fine. So I just found a way to have them kind of share the same experience, but with Mm -hmm. like, you know, making it modern by reworking Mm -hmm. the buttons Mm -hmm. and the, but, and the buttons were gifted to me because they know I'm a fanatic of St. John and, um, and there was about eight of them. So it made perfect pairs. And so I decided to, to do this with them. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were really uh, stoked when I, they saw the earrings. And so I I guess we'll move on to the next piece that I want to show you. 
Um, let me see here. So the next piece, I'm going to go grab that really quickly mm -hmm. okay. than I thought, but it's okay. <laughs> so my first piece for summer is, um, here, let me get that. Oh, I love it. This is a vintage Escada bodysuit. It is absolutely to die for. It is very, very beautiful. I thought I'd bring it up since it's summertime. Yes. And, um, and yeah. And so, um, at Canela Vintage, you'll find a lot of really nostalgic pieces mm -hmm. like this. Uh, one of my first experiences uh, seeing Escada was the movie Copycat with my mom. Mm -hmm. And the first scene, the shoe comes off. It's a red shoe, beautiful shoe with like gold lacing. And I was like, wow, Escada. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to start off with this one since it's summertime. And uh, I think it's it's one of my absolute favorites. Yeah, um, it's a magic piece. I would <laughs> gravity towards I like secret. Ooh, absolutely this is a vintage wow. Gucci canvas um purse it's got the lock and key as well super wow. elegant timeless I like Gucci but I don't like modern Gucci I like vintage Gucci I think mm -hmm. it was a little bit more thoughtful the quality was a lot better mm -hmm. and um not everyone's gonna have these <laughs> yes absolutely so you can find that on every other model. Instagram model yeah. and the quality of light like give the stitching on the letter and these corners it's beautiful <laughs> the classic piece I mean it could be like really modern as well I think absolutely, I've, absolutely. yeah so yeah and so at Canela Vintage we have wow. it for 700 and so most of my pieces like even if it's designer I don't really like ask a lot you know mm -hmm. I just do what's fair and because I want to make sure that the fashion is attainable to everyone. So, you know, uh, definitely. But this is the second piece I want to show you. I have one more piece, which I'm sure you mm -hmm. saw when you were here, but I think it's so nostalgic and um, it's definitely eye catcher. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. Gada belt. Oh, Absolutely yes. to die for. And so this is one of like those pieces that I really don't mind if it never sells yes. <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm so in love with it yes. and it's such a divine piece. Like, honestly, if I could create a Scala quality, mm -hmm. I would, mm -hmm. but I can't. So we're just very, very honored to be housing. There's some of the most nostalgic mm -hmm. pieces because this brand is so underrated, I think mm -hmm. here in America. And so I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm with you on that. I love Escada. It's just, it's like I have this one blazer. Somebody called it the greatest showman. It's like um, bright, <laughs> a red with some, well, actually I can, I can bring it. Let me just get it. Yeah, absolutely. Get yeah. I'd love to see it. <laughs> Ta -da. Can oh, you see wow. It? Yeah. In, okay. We are in the yacht. <laughs> This we is have like a such a statement piece. I absolutely love it. Um, Adore it. Wow. Yeah. This and is so beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's the, I mean, it's the absolute, I think it's one of my most favorite items in my wardrobe because it's just, and it has like these, you know, shoulder pads, the way it's cut. It gives oh you instant God. power. And, and I love it. I love the stripes. I think somebody said it is like the greatest showman jacket because that was her first association. <laughs> they like, I can I can have that. That's well that's suited kind of for that. that. Well suited for the coat. Absolutely, it's divine. This is more of like the sporty. Like I would yeah. rock this with some white pants and like boots. Yes. And put on earrings just to be yes. sporty in that manner. And I guess maybe a little bit Princess Diana. You know. Yes, I just wanted to say. Absolutely. That's kind of like the vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And so this is another piece, a Nike piece. Uh, super nostalgic like this color the pattern uh, it's really desirable although yes. ultimately sometimes we do sell the pieces separately because mm -hmm. a girl can rock this with a crop mm -hmm. top and boots and the guy can rock this with khakis mm -hmm. and a white tee you know and just so it could be it's very gender neutral you know it, I feel like you the clothes chooses you you know exactly your expression of how you identify with it it's all on you <laughs> yes absolutely and so, yeah so this is some of the more sportier stuff that i like to have right now i'm, I'm obsessed with this like sea blue i'm yes. like die for her. yes <laughs> oh, it's super nice. nice the blue combinations are lovely absolutely stunning that ready. reminds me let me show you one more yeah 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 so talk about ready for summer <gasps> 
Oh, wow. This is and like this our is seat rare because this is a larger size, which is kind of uh, cool because I feel like a guy could also rock this as well yes. as a girl or uh, somebody that would like to maybe tie it up. Somebody mm -hmm. that would like to wear it with a belt um, around here, you know, depending on, you know, how taller you, it falls like on your, uh, you know, on your leg and your, how you're comfortable <laughs> with but I think this can go a lot of different ways. So I was really stoked to get this uh, piece. And Absolutely. So. And I love the color. And it's a scava. <laughs> yes, I, I noticed it, obviously. Like, you know, I was on the price. I noticed, I noticed the tag. <laughs> I thought, like, this is the, the colors are fun, fantastic. I just love the harmony. And then I love the, the color as well. I think that's, that's an amazing piece. So definitely, that's a oh, <laughs> lovely piece. I think for everybody who is obviously not based in San Antonio, you can also shop some stuff online, can't you? Yes, absolutely. So you are welcome to find me at uh, thecanellavintage.com. Um, I post on there not as often as I like, because I'm not going to lie, so my pieces sell really fast. And so it's mm -hmm. not beneficial for me to do it because most mm -hmm. of the time it's like, it's like Disneyland, you got to come. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, but I do understand that I have a lot of you know, people all over the world. And so I want to keep sharing that experience with mm -hmm. you guys and keep in touch in that manner. And so we are working on the website. We are devoted 10 items a week. And so that's our goal. So hopefully mm -hmm. after a certain a time, hopefully by the fourth quarter, you'll see a lot more items on there, a variety of things. And, um, and yeah, so I'm just like, it's a one woman show. So I am just like, trying to get a lot of things done but I'm so passionate about each task that you know it just kind of takes me a while sometimes but super stoked um definitely be able to find a lot of kind of vintage items for sure soon but some of my like most prized possession ones are the ones that go first so yes. that's what you have first so I probably put in all the high end designer stuff and then I'll start in with like some of the blouses and stuff like that but mm -hmm. yeah I'm definitely definitely stoked I'm um, um, I can't wait for you to come. And I'm just going to say it like that because I know it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, let's manifest it here together. I need to be in San Antonio in December again. Yes, you let me know. I can give you a little tour of the shop if you like at this time. Yes, please. You let because me know. you have a new, you are now in town. So you're in a different location. I so I need to see the I new do. shop. Okay, so we're going to start from the top. Okay, so we're going to go, um, we're going to, actually, we're going to, I'm going to go a little bit above and beyond and we're going to go out. Oh, I see a yellow skirt. Yellow skirt. Yellow is my favorite color. Obvious. It's obvious with my background. <laughs> we'll go to that after. You have to show me around the yellow skirt. I think sure. I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay. So mm -hmm. give me one second. <laughs> okay. So the shop is located here on Broadway. Oh, yes. Right in between Travis and, um, what is it? Houston Street? Yeah. Houston Street. Yes. And this is the shop. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what it looks like from the outside. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna walk in. And that's what it looks like from here. Yeah. So it's over here. So we'll just go here. Yeah. Hey guys. Ooh. That's the shop. Lots of colors. Oh, I like it's really, really nice. And so that's what I said. It's like it's like a fancy boutique, um, especially <laughs> when you're on holiday, you get that holiday boutique vibe feel with you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just because it's, uh, I'm not open just yet, so I'm gonna close the door. So here we have some uh, Christian Dior authentic uh, clip-on earrings that I mm. wanted to make into like Beauty and the Beast kind of uh, style. Um, and so I kind of put them in a cake decorating. I love that. So I got a little bit of the boy section, some of the sneakers right there. This is where I cash out people. A little bit of clothes is what it looks like on this side. We got yeah. those items I just showed you. And so oh, now wow. this is the this is the, the uh, dressing room. And now everything's size uh, organized by size. So fantastic. Go. This is what it looks like on this side. Oh, wow it's such a great space <laughs> I know you're gonna love it oh my god I can't wait I can't wait and then so we got here this is what it looks like from this side oh, wow this oh that silver jacket like that puffer <laughs> yeah oh my god that is amazing 
absolutely <laughs> that, one's a mo- that one's a modern piece but i think it's really nostalgic brought to me by a customer that, that mm-hmm. ended up getting two when they got shipped so that's how she got here fantastic but, yeah, but it's getting so a new this home is a, this is a back room which oh. is how i use it as a showroom to show my scala pieces I just wanted to say this. This is my home. This is my section, the Escada Blazer <laughs> section. This is the back. This is my shop. Actually, is the only shop in Texas or in San Antonio to have two storefronts. So this is the back. There's a chocolate factory downstairs. Today oh, they're wow. closed for Memorial Weekend, but um, usually it smells divine. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. And so yeah, so this is what it looks like from this side and. So yeah, this is a new shop. So definitely way bigger than the first time that we uh, met. So I can spend even more time in it. Oh, there's much more stuff here. (laughs) (laughs) Much, much more stuff here. Definitely. Um, I'm so happy like in with your support and, you know, everybody, you know, just kind of believing in me and, you know, buying, trusting the quality of clothes that I can provide uh, has been, uh, why I'm here and I get to, you know, serve you here on Broadway now. So really appreciative of everyone that I've met. And of course you, <laughs> and so I'm just glad to be here doing this, uh, you know, and I'm so stoked that you started your own show and like now, like, you know, we're just living. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And just talking about fashion, which I always like to do. And, you know, it's, it's like so lovely chatting to you and like, I really connected with you the first time I went into the shop and then met you because part is like you can have this shop but like you as an as an owner as a businesswoman you exude that also you know your love for the quality for the vintage for the story that is behind pieces and and I really really love that and you don't get that of like Zara or whatever so I can only urge everybody who is on their way to Texas you have to go to San Antonio you have to come into the shop and you get these amazing pieces as I said like everything I I have from your shop I keep wearing and I love them and it also reminds me of that time we had together so there's now a new story associated with these items as well so yeah check check out the store absolutely I wish there would be more tax incentives for people who work in sustainable industry like somebody who repairs your washing machine should have a better tax code somebody like you that said that is really 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 good idea (laughs) yeah Yeah, because you know that's insane yeah that's a really good idea um you know and and that's the thing that's where the mentality where everybody eats comes along because how is how is the industry of the lawn you know fixing a laundry have to do with fashion has everything to do with fashion you know yes. because it's sustainable efforts and the cost of high quality textiles comes down and more people can get thing get get the things that they need you know but but we all got to be make sure that everybody's being inclusive in that conversation exactly, exactly. and that's that's how we do we create kind of like a, a circle where we all and we, we bring everybody in so like you know the recycle and and reuse And then make not only people who have like a certain, you know, paycheck or whatever, get into that, but everybody. And And I'm also trying to get into like industries, like maybe I should get into dry cleaning and laundry and see, you know, what are we doing for sustainable efforts in those industries? Because they influence a lot my shop, you know? Yes. And um, because there's some items that I have to get dry clean, like there's no way I can try to like, you know, do them myself. And so that's where, you know, those conversations do highlight, you know, different industries and the topic is fashion. (laughs) Exactly. exactly. And I think like dry cleaning and, and also some dry cleaners also alter clothes because I, I try to encourage people and say like, don't be put off if it doesn't fit you perfectly because you can get it fitted like haute couture to you sometimes. I think especially like, I don't know if it's in the US, but in the UK, it's like everything has to be cheap sometimes. And I think, oh, if it's secondhand, it has to be automatically cheap. And I don't always agree with that because sometimes, first of all, it's the rent that you pay. It's the curation of in your shop that, you know, makes it also nicer. And you have like a mix. You have like some also that are really coveted item and like good quality, you know, you you don't barely get any garments made in that way, like the Descartes jacket. I mean, that's just like Balenciaga or that kind of really, really high end gets you that quality. Yes, absolutely. But nothing. Yes. So um and and I think that it's about uh having conversations and educating 
folks mm-hmm. about you know sustainable and how like you know you're gonna buy that coat like three different times you know when you can buy a high quality coat that's gonna last you exactly. a lifetime because some of the pieces that i have at canela vintage like are 70 years old you know yes. and they're in way better quality than like some of the newer garments that i have and so that kinds of like it's social construct, you know, like we have to, con- we have to uncondition ourselves of how we've been taught about how we think about things in the world, you know, and that it's okay to think out of the box and it's okay to question, do your own research, you know, don't just take, you know, our word for it, like yes. go and see the facts, go and, you know, and see what we're talking about, you know, and, and it, we, I understand it's not for everyone. Like some people are just not okay with like wearing something old or something used or something something that somebody else wear that's that's absolutely fine but for those folks who uh, truly want to not just only support but practice Mm -hmm. you know sustainable efforts like this is definitely for them and hopefully Mm -hmm. it'll be for the whole world soon (laughs) yeah absolutely I think I try to get more and more people in uh, like I have friends of mine who kind of like I brought them into because they see so I every time somebody comments on what I'm wearing I tell them it's secondhand because 80% of my wardrobe is secondhand. And then people are like, oh, wow, because you can see they didn't expect it because I think they have certain stereotypes in their head, rightfully or wrongfully, that they think somebody needs to look if they're mainly dressed, you know, with pre-loved items. And I think I really try to break that by being a good, you know, demonstration and the way I kind of like my styling also has that as a, as a kind of like tagline that we try a to make like your wardrobe work already, but also be kind of like supplement with things from, you know, secondhand options, whatever they are, like high end or, you know, something from a charity shop, because almost everything has been produced, has been made before. It's circling around. It sometimes only depends on how much time and effort you want to, you know, into sourcing it, which sometimes it's easier than, than other times. But I think just changing that focal point and realizing for yourself, you can find these amazing pieces that you love in on a secondhand market that really help to elevate your style, elevate you, tell your story. Absolutely. And then, you know, it's about creating community with that awareness, right? And, and then mm-hmm. us ourselves being spokespersons for those efforts, right? You know, mm-hmm. because even though we're not getting paid by campaigns and stuff like yes. that, you know, we believe it in our heart, you know, this yes. is an essence of how we want to express our livelihood, you know, and I think that's important. And so it, and it starts with, you know, us being the spokesperson for ourselves, you know, dressing and, and then showing people different options, you know, by, by expressing ourselves with our fashion. Um, but I, I do think that, uh, like, it's about having conversations about breaking down those barriers, like, mm-hmm. it's okay, like, it's, it's it's like you're gonna buy something new every single time but like the difference between what's being sold right now and secondhand is that secondhand has a variety of sizes and designers and so like even though they might be off brands like it might be a a fit that fits you and so for example for me the levi's um bend over bottoms they're like kind of more of a stretchy spandex those pants fit me like a glove and so I seek that brand out even though it's vintage Mm -hmm. and so I know that that cut fits me really well and so I know that like I'm going to seek dissimilar styles in this cup because this is what more complements my body more and and with newer styles they're telling you hey fit into this Mm -hmm. and so when you go to a charity shop, you're getting different sizes of different styles of like a 12 is not going to be a 12 consistently, you know? So it's a good way to find your body type and what cuts complement you, you know? And, and, and I I say, go for it. Like you're, like you're trying on clothes. It's already used. You're not going to dirty anything. It's like you're at a high end Gucci store and you can't touch anything, you know, like, you know, it's, it's a good way to, to, to play with, with, with what you think is right for you. Cause some people can wear heavier, um, um, fabrics like corduroy and leather. And some people can't fathom it. They're like, not about it. You know, they want more linen and cotton mm-hmm. breathable mm-hmm. fabrics. And, and then, um, so that's where I feel like you should start and play with. Cause I think that's where yes. you can really identify your style. Absolutely. The experimentation is important and absolutely what you said, like, sizing I think go overboard take it out look at it and try it on because I have things that are either 
way over my size. It also depends on how I want it to be fit. Do I want it to be an oversized fit so I can drape it and tuck it in and create some other different things of it? Or do I need want a, a kind of like body fit because mm -hmm. I style it with something that's voluminous at, at the bottom, for instance? So I think, or uh, even like blazers, I think I sometimes like the silhouette it gives. I don't need to always button up, need to button up a blazer. Agreed. Absolutely. And, and lots of people feel like, oh, but I can't close it. And, that's, and I said like, no, 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 no. You have to get sizes and that you are a size really, really kind of like out of your head and just look at things, try. There are some tips I always tell people, especially when you can't try it on, like with trousers, put the waistband around your neck and then see if it fits. Because if it doesn't, if it if you can't close it, if it doesn't overlap, most likely it won't fit your waist. It won't fit. Oh, that's a good tip. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my top tip. Um, so yeah, so I, I I really think like people experiment more color, start small, a scarf, earrings, and it can really give a different edge to an outfit. Absolutely. I think my favorite uh, fit, go-to fit would be like a blazer, a Scala blazer, but because it's Texas, I like to wear it with like um, either like uh, white shorts and yes. like a top, glasses, yes. ponytail up, clip on earrings, little uh, cute uh, like kitten sandals or something like, you know, fresh. And, and yeah, and that's like my go-to, but I wouldn't have discovered that style if I hadn't started playing with clothes and I start in Hatton, you know, finding, you know, what complements my body type, because a lot of the modern clothes does not complement my body yes. type, you know? And so I, I definitely explore and be fun, you know, like mm -hmm. fashion is about being fun and, and being playful. And I think, you know, yes. as adults, we, we lose playfulness because we can't yes. play with toys, but I think yes. really, really enhances that playfulness. Yes you know, and for men as well, you know, I think, I think it, it says a lot when a man is, is very, you know, um, I'm not going to say well kept, but you know, that he took mm -hmm. effort to present mm -hmm. himself to this social event or to this mm -hmm. meeting, or, you know, uh, because then it shows that like, he's, you know, respectful and he's yes. about his time and, you know, and he's about his business and, yes. and it, it really, you know, and, and I think it, it gives people second second thoughts for not messing with you you know because you're coming off confident you know you're like like you said unspoken um uh, non-verbal language you know you're already knowing that okay <laughs> they're gonna come correct and so and I think fashion you know emphasizes confidence I know we talked about it earlier but mm -hmm. you know I know we put said cut a long time ago but you know this conversation is good <laughs> yeah no absolutely I just I just love chatting to you because you know you're just a soul sister I have one man that I'm going to interview he's actually somebody I know in person he's called T D Paul Ferguson and he's such like he looks like the English gent. He'll interview him because he he has like lovely vintage pieces. He he dresses phenomenally well. And I find men are a bit like meh about sometimes of dressing. It's not as, as much as women. I think it's coming more, but he's such a perfect example. So I obviously have to chat to him of as well. Of course, too. of course. I can't wait yeah. to see that segment for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you again for having me on. Honestly, I cannot wait. Uh, hopefully I get you get to have me back on the show. Hopefully, even hopefully you get to come and we get to have a show yes. episode here. Why not? Yes. Right? <laughs> if I come, the camera comes with me and we'll do like a try on in the shop. And maybe, Absolutely. Yeah, maybe we can think about it, but maybe there is also something to like, you know, different seasons and we take your top picks or something like that. It would be nice talking through through your items. And Absolutely. I love Absolutely. The stuff that you rework, I think that's super. And if you can get like an embroidery machine and put your logo on it, I would be all I, the more for it. I am, you know what, right now I feel like I love that I don't I love that I can allow myself to be a student all mm -hmm. the time you know and I feel like that's part of like allowing growth and so um it does take patience and you know but I think to myself am I going to do six months of like wanting to keep doing something or am I going to like you know find a sensible way to get started and then teach myself you know 
And so even though you have your degrees and you have all these things, there's still so much to learn about the world, you know? And so um, I, I hope to explore more, uh, more creativity through fashion and making my own things. Uh, so yeah, definitely look out for stuff. <laughs> yes, yes I, I'm super curious and I'm sure a lot of people who will watch this will also be curious to follow your journey. I always, I can only say like lifelong learning is key. Also it keeps your brain cells moving. It keeps everything, creativity flow and and yeah I, I love to to watch your journey as it comes along thank you so much again appreciate you love you and I appreciate you likewise. for having me on the show yes likewise <laughs> thanks so much for a really lovely chat and I hopefully fingers crossed please everybody cross I'll be there in December and we'll do a, a live one in the shop it'll be winter so we can be a little bit more luxe <laughs> exactly exactly top luxe it's still winter in texas so that's a bit different than winter in britain but yeah, it, yeah, yeah. we can we can exude it more perfect <laughs> all right then thank you Thanks again so appreciate you bye